Hey YouTube, my name's Chris. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be covering an extensive graphics card overclock guide. We're going to be using a 3080 Ti, but in this video, you can follow along if you have an AMD graphics card or any kind of an NVIDIA graphics card. It's basically all sort of the same concept. This video is more or less a bridged off mode from my original video, Free the Optimization Pack video, which kind of covers uh, most things. And this video is just dedicated for overclocking your graphics card. Now, overclocking your graphics card is completely safe. It's actually covered under warranty. Um, and nothing can really go wrong because worst case scenario, if it's unstable, the game will just crash, the driver will crash. Worst case scenario, I have seen the PC freeze or blue screen if you go too crazy. Then you just do a force restart, reset the overclock, it's fine. Now I'm going to assume a lot of you guys have followed along to my free fee optimization pack video because that's the stuff that really, really matters and it's going to help. It's all sort of interconnected. And like I said, this video is dedicated for overclocking graphics card. In this video, we have an Asus 3080 Strix OC. We're going to be overclocking, which is going to be interesting. Now some cards are pushed further than others out of the box, so we might not have too much headroom on this card. Now regarding limitations with overclocking there are limitations so i'm going to assume that you followed my free fee optimization pack video and you should have free fee optimization pack in your c drive if you haven't i really can recommend going back and checking out that video because there's lots of really good stuff in there to get you some more frames and lower input lag open the graphic optimizations and we're going to use uh this thing here which says check pci gen and resizable bar okay this is just gpu z so we're going to open this and we're dealing with a few things when it comes to limitations with overclocks. One of them is going to be cooling because when you hit temperature sort of limits the graphics card down clock. So it, on this card, it's saying the temperature limit is kind of like the current at 83. We can up that limit with the overclocking software um, and the maximum is 91. So pretty much just the graphics card will shut down or the drivers will shut off. It's got protection limits built into the card BIOS itself. But when you start creeping up, I believe Nvidia starts to throttle even around 40 degrees. So, I mean, it is what it is. Um, when you start to hit temperatures, the core will downclock. Um, there's not too much you can do about that. Now, if you have a, uh, I've even seen this on new cards, but a relatively older card, you can get clumped dust up in the um, the fins where the, where the cooler is, the heat sink. Um, I really recommend watching a, a disassembly guide on YouTube on your card, taking it apart, replacing the paste, because the paste can go really bad, especially, if, so you've got a 1080 Ti now. Um, I can guarantee you if you've had one since release that the paste would have gone completely bad and old especially if you want to hold on to that card, clean out all the dust in the uh, heat sink completely. That can help a lot. You can obviously get aftermarket coolers. There's aftermarket air coolers. You can also go custom water loop, custom uh, closed loop coolers I've seen. Now, a lot of the newer cards that are coming out come with really, really good um, air coolers. Um, and it's kind of, I don't want to say pointless to especially the overclocking community because you guys might get offended, but a lot of the newer cards come with such good air coolers. It's not really worth to... Uh, go full custom water loop and then flash a slightly bigger bias and only be able to hit maybe an extra 20 megahertz if you're lucky the air coolers that come with the newer cards are really really good out of the box but with the exception of some cards some of the founders cards and some of the cheaper vendor cards kind of come with horrible cooling or the paste job just wasn't done properly and i have seen things like that where the, the cards just get really hot straight away now the other limitation that we're going to be dealing with is going to be the power limit okay so on maximum on this card lucky for us is quite a high power limit it's 450 watt which is something that i recommend checking out if you wanted to buy a graphics card now um 3080 ti is definitely overkill um but um this card is actually a client's card i'm actually building a client a pc for him i'm waiting for the rest of the parts to get here and i decided i'm going to plug the 3080 ti in my pc start finding the the limits and, and find out what this thing could overclock to before i put it into the PC that I'm going to be building him and I thought hey we might as well just do a video on overclocking the 3080 Ti. Now I mentioned what you can do for, for cooling you can also up your fan speed um, in um, overclocking software and I'll explain why we're using the software that we're going to be using you might see MSI after burner hey I don't have an MSI card really recommend MSI but I'll talk about that in a second. You can also flash BIOS this will void your warranty but if you flash it back before you send it back for warranty they won't really know but it technically does avoid warranty. I'm not going to be doing that um, with this client's card at all. Uh, the 450 watt is definitely more than enough and most of the time he's playing 1080p low settings so he's not even going to hit this uh, power limit. Um, you know it's generally like 4k, 2k complete ultra settings you might come close 
that's when that's going to happen. Um, but yeah, just something worth mentioning. Now, you can flash BIOS, and I've covered this in other videos before, but I'm going to cover it now. Generally, if you wanted to flash a different BIOS in your card for a higher power limit, there's a few things you need to consider. Make sure the BIOS is compatible. So do a little bit of Googling and research. Always flash, say, see there's three 8-pin connectors on this card. You would only want to flash another three 8-pin connectors. So say hey, he had a two 8-pin connector, it would be a really bad time and you, you, you don't want to flash the three pin because you could end up completely bricking your card. There's a great website, I've mentioned this plenty of times in my other videos, but um, the overclocking forums, the 3080 Ti Owners Club, there's other Owners Club out here. Something that I would look for if I'm buying a graphics card would definitely be sort of the power limits, okay? So um, just scrolling through here, I definitely always try to opt for three times eight pin. And a lot of these cards, you might end up spending the same anyway. 450 watt, that's pretty decent, 450 watt. So I, if I was to buy a card out of the box, I would probably try to go for the one that has the highest power limit. Okay, some of these only have 350 watt and they're two times eight pin. Um, and so say for an example, uh, let me give you guys an example. Say you had a gigabyte master, which is three times eight pin and it's only 400 watts and you wanted a little bit extra out of the card. Cooling's fine on it and it should be pretty good on a master. You want to get a little bit extra out of it. Technically, you could go ahead and flash the um, 450 watt BIOS off it um, and then sort of make it work so you can get that extra juice. There are XOC BIOSes um, by sort of EVGA, which are just unlimited power and um, you know unlimited voltage. Majority of the time, I really recommend avoiding those if you're just using air because it gets to the point where it's unlimited uh, you know, uh, power Usually it's about a thousand watt because you're never going to go over that and it'll kind of run 1.2 volts or, or more consistently. It'll get to the point where if, if you're doing that on air, it'll end up just down, getting the card too hot and down clocking anyway, regardless of the custom fan speed that you might have have um, uh, put in. So actually as an example, my 3090, um, you know, there was an XOC bias that came out and I thought, great, I'll try this out. But it turns out even uh, with my uh, air, air cooler and I had repasted it and I'm running 100% fan speed here and the, the, the case flows are really good. I got more frames and better benchmarks with this with the 480 watt custom BIOS that I was using. Well, not custom, but it was um, uh, it was a MSI Gaming X Trio 3x8 pin 3090. And I um, tr tried flashing the Asus Strix OC 3090 BIOS, which is 480 watt. Great time. Fantastic benchmarks. Got a lot, little bit more headroom out of it, which was great. And then went to flash the XOC and it got to the point where it was just putting too much voltage and heat into the card and, and it couldn't cool it. So the XOC BIOS is probably only worth it if you want to go down the custom water cool route. Now I'm not going to cover flashing BIOS in this video, um, but yeah, like there's um, info on how to do that here if that's something that, that would interest you. But as far as going out and buying a card, I'd be trying to buy one with a higher power limit and you may find a lot of them are going to be the same price anyway. So to say as far as spending money, um, you know, I'd be going through and looking at the prices of the cards. So say this is all I have available to me. I would definitely be looking at that and looking at the biases. So the MSI Gaming X Trio, have a look at that. MSI Gaming X Trio is three times eight pins. So even if that had the lower bias target, potentially I could flash the higher bias target. It doesn't have as many power stages. So technically that's not as nice. Um, and then the XC3 um, Ultra Gaming, check that out. XC3 Ultra Gaming. Um, there's a couple of them here, but um, the two times eight pin, so I would avoid that. I'd rather get the Gaming X Trio and it's cheaper. FTW3 Ultra, as you guys can see here, so FTW3 Ultra all come three times eight pin and they all come with a 450 watt BIOS. So that would probably be safe bet, I would say. Um, you know, but if you wanted to save a bit of money, technically you could get the MSI Gaming X Trio. It doesn't have as good power stages, but you could flash. Uh, a better BIOS on it, just so you guys know. Now, here's a website where you can grab BIOSes. There's not too many that have been uploaded yet, but that's how you will go and get the BIOS, and there's some information on how you could flash the BIOS there, but, um, you know, only for advanced users, I'd recommend doing that. Now, as you can see, there are some cards that are pushed further out of the box with a higher frequency already, so there might not be as much headroom to overclock it plus that as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, another thing I should probably mention, some cards have a dual BIOS switch on it as well. I don't know if I can see it in the photo here. Might not be able to see it in the photo, but I believe it's on the other side. There is a dual BIOS switch. I think it's on the other side and one is silent mode, one is performance mode. Obviously, I'd recommend putting it in performance mode so you can get a little bit extra. If you're going to do that, make sure you turn the PC off first, flip the switch and then turn the PC on again. 
I think that just about covers enough so let's get started with actually overclocking the card itself so we're going to be using a couple of things here msi afterburner you can use msi afterburner for any card it has the best code and it's the best more most easiest convenient software regardless of the brand of the card so i'd really recommend using msi afterburner and rivet tuner statistics server i covered these briefly in the optimization pack hopefully you guys have gone and watched that we're using superposition to benchmark and also stress test the overclock and make sure it's okay so we're going to be using those two tools today the reason why i recommend superposition benchmark is one it's free and two it, it, it's you can do ak optimize which is an incredibly stressful um benchmark and if you can generally pass that with your overclock you should be completely stable in any other application it is overkill because most of the time you're probably going to be playing 2k or 1080p medium low settings anyway if you're a competitive player but it's just to make sure it's completely stable because the last thing you want is any kind of like a driver crash after an eight hour gaming session if that's something that you do you don't want to push the card too far especially if it's not stable stable is probably the most important thing here because if it's if it's unstable you can get micro stutters or the vrm on the card can heat up too much and you can get kind of input lag and stuff like that so uh, stable is the most important thing here and what i'd like us to do first is get a baseline with a completely stock settings because when we overclock um this card especially the newer cards the 3000 series cards they actually have memory error correction on the memory uh, clock so you can push it really high and you won't get graphical glitches or you won't get crashes but it can yield worst fps or some input lag because it has memory error correction so that's something to keep in mind that's why we need to get a little bit of a baseline here that's the most important thing so what we're going to do is we're going to open superposition benchmark to get a baseline i'm going to click benchmark and i'm going to do 8k optimized we're going to do a full run of that take a screenshot and i'm also just going to do 1080p extreme so we've got a baseline on 1080p extreme settings and then the crazy setting that we're going to obviously make sure it passes with this overclock baseline setting and then we're going to look at overclocking it dialing it in we'll find the limits and then once we found the limits so we'll back it down a little bit and then we'll make sure it's stable and then we'll benchmark it so I'm going to go ahead and run 8K Optimize now. If you run 8K Optimize and it says not enough VRAM, bump it down to the next one. If it still says not enough VRAM, bump it down to the next one. Maybe your card doesn't have enough VRAM memory on it to run that, and that's fine. Just try to pick the max one that you can actually do with your graphics card. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, let it run through. I believe it takes only a few minutes, and then we should get um, a basically a benchmark result. So for the reference, we followed the free the optimization pack, and I have thrown my BIOS overclocks on for this video i haven't covered a cpu or memory overclocking guide that will be coming very very soon but i just wanted to make sure nothing else was getting to get it get in the way so the only thing that we're focusing on here is the graphics card overclock okay there's a the result that we got for ak optimizers you can see here max temperatures of 77 degrees uh, maybe even just upping the fan speed uh, manually might even help this benchmark immensely or just uh, upping power limits but we're just getting baselines here so i'm going to take a print screen i'm going to go back I'm going to go ahead and run that 1080p extreme just so we can get two kinds of benchmarks here. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And there's the result that we get as a baseline is 1080p extreme. So I'm going to take another photo here. Now it's time for us to actually start overclocking and pushing this thing. Now, for any of you that actually didn't get through any of these benchmarks, you had graphical issues or you had glitches, white flashes, a black uh, little like boxes coming up rainbow colors or it just keeps crashing there's something seriously wrong i'd recommend following my optimization pack uh, video if you haven't and then maybe look at your graphics card temperatures or maybe your card is dying or needs to be rma there are some unlucky people that buy brand new cards that are just dying out of the box there was a certain instance of some cards some of the newer cards coming out where they were pushed a little bit too high out of the box and it wasn't completely stable it didn't pass uh, i guess their testing method properly so down clocking a little bit helped but personally if that happened to me i would just rma the card completely so yeah if that is the case that needs to be addressed uh completely all right anyway let's gonna go back and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit game we're gonna hit 720p we're gonna hit custom right we'll hit custom and we'll go 720p or we go six we go 600 by 900 here and we'll just um up the we'll go extreme um shaders and high textures we can turn all of that on now we need to open MSI Afterburner. If you followed my free optimization pack, you should have a pre-configured config ready to go with overlays already set up for you. So just open MSI Afterburner, make sure Rivertune is open as well. We can move this to the side here. 
The first thing that I want to do, even though I believe it doesn't work on the newer cards, is go into the options here and um, unlock voltage control. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Then I want to restart for MSI Afterburner and River Tuner. So there we go. Now we've got um, a voltage slider, which I believe doesn't really do anything on these cards. Now this card is already put into the performance mode on the BIOS switch, just so you guys know. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this. Apologies, we need to set this to uh, full screen to disabled. So we're in a borderless or just like a windowed mode to make our life a lot easier. And once we're in here, we're going to select um, scene, I believe. So that way it can just kind of cycle through. Um, we're just cinematic mode. That's it. So we're going to press here. So there's a couple of things we need to look out for. Graphics card temperatures, obviously ideal. We want to keep them down as much as possible. Um, and also like a, a GPU usage, which is clearly going to be 100% in this scenario because this is a very stressful test, even though we aren't running the full resolution here. Um, there are frames here, CPU temps. Uh, that's our core clock, which we're going to be playing with. Um, that's one of the most important things that we want to push that up to its limit. We've got the memory clock. That's the, the, the next thing that we're going to be doing after core clock. And that's the current watts that we're using. So we have a headroom here because we've got a 450 watt bias that we can play with. And there there's actual GPU voltage here. So first thing that I would recommend doing is going ahead and upping the power limit all the way. So we're going to up the power limit and the temperature limit all the way. Now, if you don't want to up the temperature limit or you have some cooling issues with your car, you can turn temp limit off and sort of, uh, we'll reset this back to default. We'll turn this off. You can just up the power limit. But for this case, I want to push this um, card to the max and see what we can actually do with just no limitations at all. So I want to turn that back off restart and I'm going to up both of those completely also just for the purposes of benchmarking before we stabilize everything I'm just going to go absolutely full fan speed so just hit the little a here and then scroll this all the way up and once we've done that click apply which is that button there okay and this fan speed is going to be incredibly loud obviously we're not going to leave that uh, long term it's just to sort of bench and see how far we can push the card and like i said i believe this doesn't do anything but i'm just going to set this all the way up anyway and see how we go so now what we're going to do is go back in here and now we'll see what we're actually dealing with so now it's boosted quite a lot higher before it was only boosting to about 1800 megahertz now by just doing those things Without technically overclocking it, we're getting about almost 1950 megahertz on the core clock, and now it's drawing an extra 20 watts. So already, and it looks like it's uh, using about max voltage here, 1.062. So that's looking great. That won't affect memory clock at all, just the core clock and the power limits. Um, and this fan is actually incredibly loud, so I'm sorry if you can hear it through the microphone, but it's definitely like doing its job here. So now I see we try to push. So it's, we've got where we wanted to go. Now we want to try to push. The megahertz okay the core clock the core clock so what i would recommend doing is maybe we'll start with depending on your card i'm going to start with a lot of these cards from reference if you can get over 2000 you're doing all right so these cards are kind of already pushed out of the box so i'm going to start with 50 an extra 50 we'll see what we get out of that okay and i'm going to try pushing it a little bit more I want to find the limit so i'm going to get to the point where i'm actually going to purposely crash the card to find the limit then we can just back it down manually so letting this run for a little while, we're getting 1980, almost 2000 under load. Still only drawing 400 watts though. Um, so we definitely have a little bit more headroom. It would draw more watts in the higher resolution though, I'll be honest with you. But this is just to see what we can get it to until it's actually going to crash. So um, we're going to try 150 here. And I'm pretty sure 100 would probably crash anyway. But we haven't had any. And another thing I want you guys to look out is, is for any artifacts at all. So you'll know when you see an artifact because something won't look quite right. Um, so that's an early sign of it being unstable. So I'll uh, look for artifacting. If there's no artifacting, obviously, like, um, you know, the, the, it might just completely crash. And then uh, that's an obvious other sign of it uh, not being stable. Okay, we're almost hitting 2025. Um, it still hasn't crashed yet. So I'm going to keep going with this thing. We'll try 200, but I don't think this is going to work. So I'm going to try 200. I want to purposely crash this thing. So then I know when to back it down. Another thing you will notice as the um, core temperature goes up, we're up to 73 now, the um, the megahertz will drop down and that, that is a limitation because that is just, um, you know, a temperature limitation and that's just something that you have to deal with, obviously. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is a pretty stressful test, so it's going to get the card to run quite hot. 
Okay, now I'm up to 250, really trying to make this card crash, and I'm surprised it hasn't yet. But maybe if we ran this long term, it would crash. But I want to initially just make it crash, just so I know where we're at with the limits. Okay, there we are. We just got a crash there. So now we go ahead and, and we uh, bump it down. Now, if you have issues rerunning the benchmark, we can use a shortcut key to reinitialize the graphics driver. Now, I totally forgot how to do that. It is Windows key, Control, Shift, plus B. So that's what you actually need to press. In this case, I don't think we should have to because it wasn't a completely hard crash. But if it was a hard crash, you might either need to restart the PC, start again, or um, basically, um, yeah, run that, like press that shortcut. So I'm going to try 220 now on the call. We've kind of found where we're at. I'm going to apply that just there and I'm going to go ahead and run this again and let it just keep running and see what happens. See if we get another crash and just repeat the process basically. So I'm going to bump it down until we can at least run this for a little, uh, a at least a period of time because um, we just want to find the limits. So I'm going to click cinematic mode um, and just let this run here. Just reminder we're checking like the gpu uh you know like temperature ideally we, we, if we want to want to try to stay under 80 although the 8k optimize will get it up to 80. uh we want to check the core clock so it's currently doing around uh, 2050 which is a, this looks like a pretty damn good card i'll be honest with you um be interesting to see what there we go we got another crash there so we'll just go ahead and we'll close that and press ok so then we'll bump it down again bump this down to 200. that was easy enough we didn't even get any artifacts it just crashed We'll go ahead and we'll click run again and we're just going to keep repeating the steps over and over again until we can at least like i said get this thing to consecutively run for a little while without crashing now something i'll just mention here the xoc bios which hasn't been released for this card will literally i believe force a 1.2 voltage at all time with a thousand watt power limit so basically there would be no uh power limit or temperature limit at all um obviously you still have to deal with um uh, temperatures down clocking the card but that's just something worth mentioning here it is going to be adjusting the voltage and adjusting the clock based by temperatures it will bump up and down that is normal that will happen so i'm gonna let this loop for a little bit on 200 plus on the core and we'll see how long this can run for all right i've let this loop a few times i'm happy with that as a, a rough baseline we obviously may need to lower this a little bit when we put the proper stress test on but at least we've got a bit of a base and it's it's looped a couple of times so it's, it's semi-stable at the core clock now it's time for us to work on the memory clock so i'm just gonna go balls deep and i'm gonna go 500 on the memory clock then click apply let's see if that actually applied into effect as you can see here it did we're at 10,000 on the memory clock okay and basically we're going to do the same thing again make sure we're not getting any visual glitches and make sure we're not getting any crashing at all all right and then i'm not seeing anything straight off the bat so i'm going to try a thousand on the memory some of these cards we're kind of really getting at the limit here around, around about a thousand it may have crashed no we're still going here okay a thousand so now we just wait it out a little bit longer. There was an extra 500 from what we um, originally had. No graphical gl glitches or crashing yet. I'm going to try 1200. Now I'm starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. I probably wouldn't want the client to have this as a daily at all. And another thing, good thing to do is just check the FPS, make sure the FPS doesn't drop as well, because if it's unstable, it's just going to... Oh, I just got a little bit of a flash. You guys might not have seen that, so that's a, a sign of instability. So I'm going to back that down to maybe 1100. I'll apply that, and then I'm going to go back in, and I'm just going to let it loop. I'm going to keep an eye out for any visual glitches, make sure it doesn't crash. Just let it loop for a while. And we just had a crash right away, so that's great. I can go ahead and I can bump that down to a thousand. It didn't look like a hard crash, so we don't have to run that shortcut or restart the PC. Okay, go ahead and click run and we'll try on a thousand, see where we're at. I'd imagine like some of these cards don't overclock too well on the memory, so I'm going to say around maybe the 750 mark, just a wild guess, but we'll see what happens with this card. It is totally dependent on silicon lottery, so some cards will do higher, some cards will do lower. Um, it just totally depends. You could buy two of these cards side by side straight off the factory line and because of silicon one can do better than the other and that's just the way it is 
Now this thing's still going at um, a thousand on the memory so far. It looks so far so good, but what I'd recommend doing at this stage while this is looping is go back into the optimization pack and open GPU Z, which is, is called this one. We covered this in that video about resizable bar, which is something that it's highly recommended. Um, as you can see here, um, resizable bar. Recommend having that enabled to give you a few more frames if you're uh, you know, motherboard BIOS, graphics card BIOS, and driver supported it, and your card supported it with it. But go ahead and click sensors here, and I'm going to leave sensors open. I'm just going to drag this over here because I want to keep an eye out. Some cards will have a memory temperature reading and some won't. So luckily for us, this card does. So we can just keep an eye on it because I, I want to make sure it just doesn't get too hot because I know, I believe this is a VRM temperature, at least it should be, but um, some um, cards can just get incredibly hot, and if that's the case, it gets incredibly hot, we might not want to push the memory as far, because gaming for a really long session, we can look at getting our micro stutters, and that's something we want to completely avoid here, but so far this is going quite well. If we can get 200 on the core and 1,000 on the memory, that's really, really good. Now, obviously, like I said, um, the uh, GDR6 on these cards has memory error correction, so it's definitely worth benchmarking it um, with the memory clock at zero and then a thousand just to be a hundred percent sure that maybe a thousand isn't fully stable. Like it's stable to the point where it's not crashing or showing artifacts, but it might be like um, unstable to the point where it's giving us a few less FPS. So that's something worth doing. We're going to be benchmarking it without the memory clock and then with the memory clock just to compare and just to make sure. But at the moment, memory temperature looks totally fine. We're doing quite well. This is a really good cooler on this card. Um, very, very blessed to be able to work with such a good card to be able to do this with because some cards are a little bit more difficult. Um, there's also another thing that you can do as far as overclocking. And if I can get my mouse back, I might just have to alt tab. There is the option to use the curve editor if you wanted to look at undervolting your graphics card. Um, obviously, if you've just hit um, temperature limits and, and power limits, you can look at undervolting uh, your graphics card as well. That That is another thing that can yield a few more frames. But if you've got a relatively decent core I wouldn't really bother. I don't usually bother with this at all. Um, generally, I uh, rec really recommend doing this um, sort of on um, really mini builds that don't have um, the greatest cooling sometimes. It might be worth doing that to get um, some, you can get a few more frames from undervolting as long as it's going to be stable and you can get lower temperatures, um, but we're not going to be covering that in this video. Anyway, continuing on, I'll just let this keep looping and I'll probably let this loop for a couple of times just to be sure. And once I'm happy with that, I've seen no graphics artifacts and temperatures are okay and no crashing now we can move up to the big boy stage and actually go ahead and run these benchmarks now you could go to the nitty-gritty if you really wanted to you could try the core clock, core clock at 205 the memory clock at 1010 um at that point it's really not i'm not going to be bothering with just the small increments um that's maybe something that you can do a little bit later when you have uh, basically learned the limits of the card and you're already doing the big benchmarks if you really wanted to just uh, push a tiny few increments out of it but for now um we're just going to stick just with the basics all right guys i've looped this a couple of times i've had no graphical glitches so now i would say is a good time to let the card cool down a little bit and we can look at doing a benchmark after a restart so what we're going to do here is we want to save this to a profile we also wanted to uh, to apply it on startup so what you need to press here is the save button so we can save a profile and then just click one. So that'll save it to profile one. So say we press reset here, which will reset everything. We can actually hit one and then apply. So it'll apply that back again. Once we've done that, go ahead and hit this windows button here, which will apply the system overclocking settings on startup. So we actually don't even need to open this MSI Afterburner software. It'll apply the overclocks and startup through task scheduler. Okay, so I'll show you something here this task scheduler and if you go to task scheduler library we should see msi afterburner so that's going to apply the overclocks on startup now that's going to be useful for us when we've got this completely dialed in and stable we do not want to leave msi afterburner open all the time it is a monitoring tool it does cause two milliseconds of input lag true story i've measured it myself with latency tools okay if you actually use a fan curve 
you will need to have this program open but if you use a custom fan speed or just the auto fan speed consistently you don't need to have the program open at all just so you guys know that so i'm going to let the card cool down a little bit i'm going to restart the pc and we're going to go ahead and run the um uh, the 1080p extreme and the 8k optimized benchmarks again with this overclock one we'll make sure it just doesn't crash and two we'll check the kind of benchmarks we're getting and the kind of improvement that we're getting by doing this a great way of knowing that overclock applied on startup without MSI Afterburner opening. I've just done a restart of the PC. I can hear the graphics card fans in 100% fan speed now, so I know very well that it's applied. But regardless, like I said, I'm going to be running the benchmarks. Um, again, actually, I'm not going to have MSI Afterburner open. We may potentially lose a couple of frames having it open doing the benchmark, and I didn't have it open before, so that wouldn't be a fair benchmark. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and run these two, and we'll see what results we get. All right, let's have a bit of a look. It's not looking good, and I'm going to say that the memory um, overclock is too much, and it's probably using memory error correction and giving us worse results. Let's have a bit of a look here. So we've got the base 8K, 7468, and then the um, 8K with 200 and 1,000. So 7468 and 5497. So that's uh, significantly a worse score. I'm going to say that the, the memory is the problem here. Now at um, 1080p stock settings are 12768 and here we got 12748. Now the fact that we got quite significantly worse, so it is slightly better here but it's not better like it should be. There's something wrong because it's just testing with the 8K. You can see this is quite high for the overclock. This is quite low. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to let the card cool down. I'm going to benchmark this overclock without the memory overclock. So I'm going to set this to zero. I'm going to click apply. All right. And then I'm going to restart the PC, run those benchmarks again with just the power limit, fan speed, voltage, and just core clock. And we'll see what kind of results we get because it should be significantly higher, not lower. It's a sign of instability. I'd probably say it's the memory error correction here because we're not getting any memory errors because it's memory error correction. It's just... Um, basically it's giving us worse scores and this is a big deal I see a lot of people um, will get these cards and bump the memory all the way up and think it's awesome but in uh, the end they're actually getting worse frames and worse results and they just don't know it so it's kind of a big deal to do this properly all right guys took the memory off and did overclocks without the memory as you can see here I've just gone by date and name so we know what's up so this is the base 8k we've got 7468 and this is just 200 in the call with unlimited power and full fan speed so we have 7468 and with 200 in the call we have 7904 so that's a decent improvement really really nice so let's look at the um 1080p benchmark 12768 and with 200 in the call 13391 so that's looking really really good so now what i'm going to have to do is go and find the sweet spot for the memory it's going to be a little bit tedious i'm going to go ahead and dial it in I'll probably start with 750 on the memory. I'll do some benchmarks and I'm going to use these as the baseline now. If it's not an improvement, then I'll bump it down to 500. If it's not an improvement, I'll bump it down to 250. Try to find that sweet spot where it's actually like stable and increasing FPS, not making us lose FPS. So I'm going to start with two, 750 on the memory. I'll save that to profile one and make sure this is checked. I'm going to restart the PC to let it cool down and run the benchmark again. Um, on that and we'll see what happens all right guys check this out right so i just ran um 750 on the memory okay and that's the benchmark that we got 8k optimized so let's have a bit of a look the 8k with just 200 on the core we got 7904 8k with 750 on the core 7898 so that's a, a nice improvement there we were to the point where it's actually like stabilized and we're getting more frames not less because remember we tried a thousand on the core so i'll show you a thousand on the core 5497 and then 750 on the core nice score so you really need to make sure that the the, the memory overclock is stable otherwise you could just bump it up too much and get a less fps so um what i'm actually going to do is rather than running the the 1k um, uh, 1080p at 750. I'm going to bump it up just a tiny little bit more. I'm going to try 850. We'll try 850. I'm going to go and run this benchmark again and we'll see what happens. I just finished running that benchmark. It looks promising. I'll make sure that I did take that screenshot here. I did. So this is going to be 8k 200 850. So let's have a look here. We'll make sure we can compare. So we've got 7989 and now we have 
8018 so it's going up so we're getting to the point where we're going to obviously find that sweet spot because a thousand was unstable so let's go ahead and open msi after burner um <clears throat> i mean i'm just gonna find something in between maybe i'll go for 900 go for 900 give the pc a restart and we'll see what happens all right run the benchmark at 900 and it's actually worse so at 850 8018 and at 900 on the memory 7924 so it's worse we're literally almost finding the sweet spot the sweet spot probably is 850 but i am going to just try a little bit more i'm going to try try 875 somewhere in between i'll go ahead and run this benchmark again restart the piece so let it cool down see what happens all right guys so i've definitely found the sweet spot it definitely is 850. have a look at the 850 benchmark here 8018 and have a look at 875 just an extra 25 megahertz on the ram it's actually a worse score so that's i would say that's past benchmark variation to the point where 850 is definitely the sweet spot here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bump back down to 850 and i want to try and be a little bit greedy because this is um you know work for a client and i want to give him the best possible so I mean, I'm going to try 220 on the core, just a little bit extra, see if we can get a little bit more out of this card, make sure it's stable. So I'm going to try 850 on the memory, 220 on the core. We're really get, getting down to the nitty gritty here and we'll see what we can get out of this card. Just, just the basic increments now to the point where I just find where it's not stable and then just back it down just a little bit. All right, guys, I actually went 225 on the core. So that's our score with 200 on the core and um, 850 on the memory, 8018. And then this is uh, 225, 8057. So a bit of an improvement here. I'm really kind of pushing the limits here. I might just try a little bit more, but I doubt we're going to be doing any more than this. It looks like we're almost at that point. So once we're at this point, probably just a loop the benchmark in cinematic mode, maybe an hour or so, make sure it's stable. If we get a crash after an hour or so i'll probably bump it down ever so slightly until we get to the point where we're not crashing with long-term use but um we're getting pretty much the limits here the only thing more you could do with this card if you wanted more you would really need another bias with a higher power limit um completely unlocked and then you would need to worry about cooling at that stage to keep it cool with that amount of voltage and heat all right so pushing the core more actually got slightly worse results let's go back to pictures here um i'll just type this in so what did i end up doing it was 235 i believe if i remember correctly i'll just have a quick look it was yeah 235 so here we go like 225 is 8057 and 235 is 8027 i'd say i did restart and let the card cool down so that's um a little bit more past benchmark variation so i would say this is stable so i would call this as a base and i think we found the sweet spot so now what i'm going to do is i'll um benchmark it in the um uh, 1080p mode so we can um get a uh, comparison versus how many more frames you're actually going to be getting roughly in um, really gpu heavy games um and then what i'll do is i'll basically manually go ahead and bump down the fan speed and i'll find something that's um reasonable where it's not too loud but it's doing a better job than the auto sometimes auto is totally fine and will do a good job other times uh, depending on the bios version it might run too low even though it's hitting um really high temperatures and it's not really like good enough so that's something i'll play around with a little bit and then i'll actually use the graphics card play a few games long term um you know over, over the next few days until i get the rest of the pc parts to make sure this is completely stable it's um you know and i'll also loop this um in the gaming mode um and at least for an hour or so probably in 1080p extreme because he's only going to be playing 1080p low settings most of the time um and just make sure we can at least loop an hour without crashing and obviously use it the card and make sure it's all uh, running okay but um so far looking good so i'm going to lock that in completely Right, so I've already, sorry, my bad, I already opened MSI Afterburner, so it's getting late here. So 225 on the core and 850 on the uh, memory, and that's where we're at. So I'm going to apply that, I'm going to save over our original profile, and I'll just recheck that and make sure that that works. And yeah, it should be good, so I'll just run 1080p and show you guys a comparison before I let you guys go. Alright guys, so here's the final comparison that we have. Um, our base settings, 8K is 7468. And our final AK settings is 8057. Pretty damn nice increase. Uh, let's look at the 1080p. Uh, 12768. And we have 13522. And yes, this was quite a little bit of an effort. 
took me quite a few hours but this is higher fps for free essentially just need a little bit of labor and time like i said i'm going to find a fan speed that's uh relatively decent we'll check it versus the auto fan speed the auto fan speed is not good enough we'll find a fan speed that's not too loud in the background and then i will loop this stress test a couple of times to make sure it's okay use the graphics card for a few days playing a few games gp heavy games make sure everything's all good no micro starters or anything like that if it is after a period of time then i just bump it back and just kind of work with it you know we found our max we found our base if we need to bump it down a little bit that is okay that is okay especially if it's like a really long gaming session all right and that's why i'm going to loop this uh this uh stress test for a little while just to just to be sure before i go ahead and do that but anyway guys um if it's something that interests you, I do have a service over on Twitter. You can find a schedule over there. If you're interested in me doing any of this for you on your PC, fresh Windows install, uh, BIOS settings, CPU overclocks, GPU overclocks, memory overclocks. I do dual PC setups as well, streaming PC, gaming PC, stuff like that. If stuff like that interests you, go follow me over on Twitter. Find my scheduling page link. Do stream on Twitch. Go check me out there. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, guys. It'll help me out. So anyway, hope this video helped you guys. Make sure that memory is stable. As you can see, if you push it too far, you can get worse results. Really, really important there, guys. Appreciate you all. Subscribe, like, share, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.